Okay, let's talk about in vitro fertilization, IVF. What does this actually do? You hear about this a lot, but actually not so much about the process, but recently with stem cell research, you hear about a lot of embryos get left over after in vitro fertilization. The ones that aren't used get frozen and discarded, or they can be donated for research. That's where IVF comes up a lot. And uh, IVF is, a, is some technology <coughs> methods that scientists had developed to help couples have kids basically uh, because some of them can't get get pregnant very easily even despite having sexual intercourse at the optimal time optimal time of course being uh, with candles and a nice dinner just kidding optimal time being around ovulation around ovulation so day 14 uh, from when the period actually starts infertility if some couples are infertile, maybe they can't get pregnant through normal means, but maybe we have some assisted technologies that can help. The infertility may be temporary or permanent, and unfortunately, IVF can't solve all of these issues. Okay, Blocked oviducts can be overcome, because if you think about the physiology of it, they're still producing eggs, the eggs are just somehow not reaching the oviduct in order to meet sperm. Okay, there may be something, some kind of blockage, some kind of growth there. But if you can go in surgically and actually stimulate the ovary to release eggs and then somehow extract them, well, that can be overcome. And then we can take care of that in a Petri dish. Um, low or zero sperm count, unfortunately, cannot be overcome with IVF. This guy's very sad. He wanted to have kids. Um, can't do that. It's amazing. In order to actually get pregnant, it's amazing what percentage of your sperm cells have to actually be viable. I mean, per ejaculation, we're talking about hundreds of millions of sperm cells being released. And if 50% of them are no good, have two tails, some kind of mutation, they don't have enough energy, the tails are not long enough, that's not actually enough to actually guarantee pregnancy. And that could be considered, you would define that as being uh, infertile, infertile, even if a certain percentage of them are good. Fortunately, IVF can come along and help that a little bit. The process is basically to take some eggs and take some sperm, put them together, see if they fertilize, check them. Maybe you could genetically screen them. That's another issue there. And then implant them back into uh, the same mother. Or you could have a surrogate mother who would take care and have the baby grow in her uterus. Um, yeah, there are people out there who will do that for money. Normal menstrual cycle is stopped. FSH is a hormone follicle stimulating hormone it's injected to stimulate the, de the development of follicles and some of these eggs hcg is another hormone write it down a human chorionic gonadotropin is injected to help these follicles mature uh, meanwhile the man provides semen in a jar and we can actually use a microscope to look and extract and figure out which ones are the healthiest and use those particular ones. The eggs are extracted from the follicles and they're mixed with sperm in a dish and they're kept in an incubator at a nice, uh, toasty 37 degrees Celsius, approximately a little lower than that um, human body temperature. And the dishes are checked for fertilization. If they fertilize, then you start to see a growth of small cells. Now, doing this process will often give you many many fertilizations so you can see in this process in the end uh, a couple may have 15 different embryos to choose from and each of those 15 that's 15 potential kids they're not going to have 15 kids so they can actually look at those 15 and look at which ones are developing normally uh, i suppose at this stage you could even do a, gen do a, a dna dna test or genetic screening to find out which ones you might even have particular diseases that's crazy what you can actually do with a lot of time and technology and and some money of course um, and then they can choose which one to actually implant back in as a result sometimes they may implant two or three in hopes that one of them because the the chance of success is actually fairly low as well too so they repeat it a few times but you can also end up with uh, multiple multiple births. So twins and triplets are also very common from treatment with in vitro fertilization as well too. A uh, pregnancy test is done normally and this test, the woman urinates on the stick and the, the stick is trying to detect the presence of, it's actually detecting the presence of, what is it? I think it's HCG. HCG 
uh, that hormone, but this time that hormone has to be produced by the embryo itself, human chorionic gonadotropin. If it's there, then this line shows up. It's a little chemical test, and you're 90, I think, 8 to 99 percent uh, guaranteed that you have a baby. But that's just the first step, and then you go to a doctor to get it checked up. Of course, if you if the woman misses her period, that's another way as well too. But often when you're taking so many different hormones to try to stimulate the production of uh, these eggs that can mess up the menstrual cycle as well too so that's not the most reliable uh, way and then a scan is done to see if pregnancy is continuing normally that's what in vitro fertilization is basically there are many many couples around the world who are doing this every single day um, as humans we just have this urge to want to have kids or so, some of us do most of us do or at least most people have an urge to uh, do copulation where they start saying oh you know these guys are good looking these girls are good looking then you hit puberty you start thinking about that more and you get older so this is kind of driving us the whole point of it is uh reproduction we could have a whole discussion about that uh ethical issues so actually you should pause here and just try to think of some of these things what are some of the ethical issues that could come up this is something that you should be thinking about on your own and you should be able to do a big speech, write a big essay, but here are a few things that other students may have thought of and I bet you did too. So some of the cons would be the infertility may be passed on to the offspring. If the reason why you can't have a baby is because your DNA has somehow caused you to be infertile, well, getting the treatment, then your kids are just gonna be, have the same problem as well too. That may be passed on to them, but they could do IVF as well too. Uh, the spare embryos that are not used, like I told you, you could have 15 ready to go and you pick two or three. Now you have 12 left. What do you do with those 12? Most of the time they are freezed, uh, frozen. Freezed? Is that a word? It's freezed. He freezed. He froze. Freezed is not a word. He f that's just not a word. They're frozen and they're killed or thrown away, but they could be used for stem cell research, but that's controversial in some parts of the world as well too. Embryos are selected. I mean, if you can pick out of the 15, which ones you want, I don't want that one. That kid might have uh, cystic fibrosis. Uh, that's not a good disease. I don't want that one. What if we could go further? I think we're still pretty far from figuring out various things like, uh, well, skin color. I think just looking at the parents, you can probably have a better chance of guessing. You don't have to use DNA. Height, same thing. Probably just look at the parents and you can get a, get a pretty good idea. But the height and some of these traits are pretty complicated, controlled by many, many genes. So we don't really have a test for screening some of these. But for certain genetic diseases, we absolutely do. Are we putting too much power into the hands of the people? Is it unnatural? Is it love? Is it the will of God? If you can't have kids by normal copulation, sexual intercourse methods, maybe you aren't meant to have kids. Think about that. That brings up issues. Infertility causes may be environmental, so it might not even be the parents. This is a direct comparison to this particular statement here. Uh, embryos feel no pain, so I mean that's another I think that's kind of contradictory to here as well too that are going against each other. Um, you could reduce suffering from genetic diseases, so screening the whole process and deliberately choosing an embryo that isn't going to have cystic fibrosis and suffer and possibly die before the age of five. Um, if you know that, if you know, if you have that knowledge or you prefer not to know, aren't you, aren't you uh, ultimately increasing, improving the life of uh, the kids in your family? The process is pretty hard. Loving parents, if, you're, if, 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 two, if a couple's gonna go through the process of in vitro fertilization, they must really wanna have a kid. Uh, they're not prob they're probably not going to be uh, deadbeat parents. So make them happy, bring more goodness into the world, and look at and then you can go to the park and have a balloon and stuff like that, and then grow old like this, but lose your life. I don't know, just kidding. Okay, uh, that's it. If you have questions about in vitro fertilization, please post a question. Thank you.